Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. Today, we are continuing our ongoing coverage of the war between the Russian Federation and Ukraine. And today, before I start uh, looking at the uh, the actual battlefield, specifically some of the fighting that is taking place uh, in and around Avdivka, I wanted to address the uh, the explosion that killed uh, Zaluzhny's uh, deputy commander. I believe it was a major that was killed in a uh, uh, an explosion uh, at his home. Now, initially, there was some thought that that explosion uh, could be from infighting, possibly uh, between uh, rival Ukrainian elements. Uh, we know there is quite a bit of tension right now between Zelensky, uh, the office of the president, and Zaluzhny, the uh, commander-in-chief of the Ukrainian armed forces. And part of that is because of certain statements that General Zaluzhny made recently. Now, those statements seem to be reasonable in what he has said, especially in terms of the position of the Ukrainian military. So what happened? Well, Zaluzhny's deputy commander, this major, he's more of a uh, a staff officer there to assist General Zaluzhny, like an executive officer, but maybe not quite. Now, he had gone to an event in which they were celebrating his birthday. At this event, another Ukrainian soldier, an officer, allegedly, as a birthday gift, gave this major, the friend of of Zaluzhny, a box that contained a bottle of alcohol and several grenades of an unknown variant at this point. We believe they were Western-style grenades. Live grenades. And because of quite possibly the alcohol being consumed at the party, it's possible that this major did not entirely believe that they were real grenades. It's possible, and apparently he was informed, hey, yeah, these are these are live grenades. Why you would do that? Why you would give someone a gift of live grenades? I don't know. But this major then proceeds to take this box, among many other gifts, home to his family, to his apartment, at which point uh, his 13-year-old son starts looking at the gifts. And apparently he got into this one box where there were grenades. It's possible that the child thought the grenades were, were fake grenades and proceeded to manipulate the grenade. At which point, we understand that the major then observed what was happening in terms of his son playing with these grenades, uh, intervened, uh, grabbed the grenade, at which point the grenade detonated. So we don't think, at least on the surface, this is some sort of targeted a killing uh, of one of Zaluzhny's uh, deputies. We, we don't think that occurred. We, this sounds like a, a tragic accident on the surface. Now again, who knows? But we'll continue to monitor this and watch this, but essentially that sounds like what happened in regards to that specific event. Now, we are continuing to watch what is happening in Evdivka. And part of the issue right now within the Ukrainian leadership, both politically and militarily, is what is happening in Evdivka. It is believed that the Ukrainian military would like to pull back. They are worried about an encirclement of Avdivka. 
the political apparatus in Kiev, especially Zelensky, who is reporting to, you guessed it, Joseph Biden and the EU, they do not want Ukraine to lose Avdivka, especially after the failed counteroffensive over the summer. For the last five months, this fa- failure, this failed counteroffensive has really looked bad. And to add uh, on to that would be the loss of Avdivka. Now, the Ukrainians are piling in more troops to try and defend Avdivka. Is it going to work? Probably not. Again, the Russians are very, very close to having complete what they call fire control over the entrance and exit to Avdivka. They may not storm Avdivka. They may not have to storm Avdivka. They may simply be able to institute a a siege, and this siege will be starting in the dead of winter, so there's no power in Avdivka. It's going to be very cold. Anytime a Ukrainian unit tries to get warm, it's going to release a thermal signature, as most of the persons now in Avdivka are military personnel. Whereas the Russians, on the other hand, are simply able to go back to Donetsk, which has power, and they are able to rehabilitate, rest, get warm, and commence the fighting. The Ukrainians are not able to do that. Getting out of Adivka through this narrow corridor is becoming more and more of a challenge. Let's go over to uh, this map here where we can kind of look at exactly what's happening. So you can see the Russian lines to the north, to the east, and then to the south. And right now, the Russians are continuing a pressure campaign to the, uh, to the northwest. Okay? This is a big trash heap. It's about 200 meters in height and has the ability uh, for uh, Russian reconnaissance units to look down into this coal plant. You also have Russian units operating to the south as well. This, this locale here is a Ukrainian strong point. The main Ukrainian strong point exists in two locations. These are the old uh, communist-style apartment blocks that exist in the western portions of Adivka. There's quite a few of them. There are basements under all these buildings. These buildings in the basements of each one of these buildings are now interconnected with tunnels going to the individual buildings. Many of these buildings have now been rubbleized. They've been hit, they've been struck by Russian munitions uh, and have sustained lots of damage. But the basements under these buildings that you're seeing here is where Ukrainian forces take shelter. Now we have started to see the Russians use larger munitions in an attempt to target some of those underground shelters under these very large buildings. And we anticipate that will continue. But ultimately, the real challenge for those Ukrainian forces uh, in this sector and then the, uh, the single-family uh, housing area, these are all single-family homes to the east of the, uh, of the old communist block sector of the town. Now, if the Russians, when the Russians, I should say, are able to prevent supplies coming into the, to the Adivka cauldron, eventually they're going to run out. Ukrainian forces that are in Adivka are going to run out of supplies. They're going to run out of food, water, ammunition. And if you look at 
the road network that exists to get into Adivka. And then you look at the distance the Russians are operating. Okay? Very short distance. Up here to the north, Russians here. This is really the only route into Adivka that the Ukrainians can use to supply their forces. Essentially one road right now, to my understanding. So very difficult situation for Ukrainian forces. Now we understand that uh, Russian battlefield engineers are tunneling towards Avdivka as we speak. Now what is that going to look like? Are they going to attempt to break into the city itself through tunnels? Possibly. We know that the Russians are continuing operations, continuing small infantry operations, continuing uh, company-sized uh, armored operations designed to degrade and destroy the Ukrainian mine emplacements around the city. We also know that the Russians are continuing to build up forces in this area. As the Russian military continues to expand and enlarge, the Russians are going to have more and more capabilities to directly assault the city. Now, at what point that is going to happen? They've done it once to the north. Are they going to do it again? Quite possibly. But I think right now the Russians are perfectly fine with just shelling the hell out of Adivka, and that's what they're doing. They're using glide bombs, they're using Iskanders, they're using lots of 152mm uh, heavy artillery, grad launchers, what have you. Day in and day out, Adivka is being shelled. And you can get a better idea in terms of the, the battlefield conditions for the Ukrainian troops. So here, again, there's no power in the city. Most of these dwellings, a lot of them, have been destroyed. So shelter is difficult. So it's going to start, and it, it is already starting to get very cold in Adivka. And it's going to get colder. The Ukrainians, again, the Ukrainian forces to get relief from that cold, very difficult. And especially if you're weeks in and weeks out of getting shelled, you can't get warm, food becomes difficult to get a hold of, water becomes difficult to get a hold of, uh, it, it's not good. Whereas the Russians are able to go right here into Donetsk City. And that is the advantage Russian forces have in this siege right now very difficult situation for Ukrainian forces. Uh, furthermore, again, in the, uh, in the south, uh, Zaporizhia, again, the, the likelihood of any renewed offensive by Ukrainian forces simply is, I, I think at this point, is out of the picture. In fact, we know the Ukrainians are transfer uh, transferring units from the Zaporizhia sector towards Kupiansk, towards Avdivka, to, to help shore up those lines. Now, <clears throat> the Russians, on the other hand, have continued to reinforce these fortifications in Zaporizhia, where it will become incredibly difficult for any sort of Ukrainian counterattack. Now, again, we continue to hear about some of these smaller operations by Ukrainian forces crossing the Dnieper River. Again, these are nuisance operations. They are not designed to seize control of major settlements or towns uh, in Kherson. That is not going to happen. They have not entered Oleshki. They don't have that capability to seize control of Oleshki. The real Russian defensive line exists. Let's go over to back to this map because you can see it better uh, on the actual uh, the map. But you can see how difficult this terrain is. And this is all, this area that runs along the Dnieper River is only conducive uh, to light infantry operations. So yeah, the Ukrainians are able to operate light infantry units, 
uh, in these areas. But crossing the Kanka River here and getting into Aleshki is, is impossible right now for Ukrainian forces. So again, just nuisance raids, while at the same time the Russians are continuing to shell Ukrainian forces on the eastern bank of the Dnepro River. So that's where we set for today. We will have more very, very soon. Thank you for joining us as always. More to come. Have a good day.